Disney presents... From Frontierland, The Swamp Fox. The birth of the Swamp Fox. Starring Leslie Nielsen. I've had enough of this. Even bloodhounds couldn't catch that Swamp Fox in country like this. Come with me. Swamp Fox. That's what Tarleton called me. And I'm much obliged to him for the idea because we'll haul up here by day and we'll strike by night. In the spring of 1780, when Colonel Francis Marion first came to prominence, America's war for independence seemed all but lost. Washington's hard-pressed army was deteriorating in New Jersey, waiting for reinforcements from General Lafayette. But the French were bottled up by a British fleet standing off the mouth of Narragansett Bay. Down at Charleston, General Lincoln and his colonial army faced imminent attack by land and sea. And royal garrisons had already been established along the Carolina frontier from Rocky Mount to the Atlantic. Along this line, it was the enemy's plan to divide the colonies and conquer them one part at a time. Suddenly, to the surprise of Cornwallis, his communications were cut. His supply trains were intercepted, and isolated outpost garrisons were destroyed. In this darkest hour of his country's need, the Swamp Fox had been born. And he and his hardy band of freedom fighters were on the move. To the American patriots who lived and fought throughout those uncertain days, Colonel Marion was a hero, second only to George Washington. Even after the fighting ended, and our new nation began to expand westward. The legend of the Swamp Fox was told and retold around a thousand campfires. The result today is that there are 17 counties and 29 cities and towns scattered throughout the United States that proudly bear the name of Marion. Now this is the first of several stories we will bring you about the daring adventures of America's Robin Hood of the Revolution, the Swamp Fox. Its title, the birth of the Swamp Fox. has been laying on Charleston Harbor all these weeks without firing a shot. Of course. While we watch the sea, they make a surprise attack by land. It's more likely a combined land and sea attack, Sergeant Jasper. How many marching hours are we from Charleston? Twelve. Maybe less. It's all the time we've got. About troop, Sergeant. About troop, huh? Colonel? Saw it with my own eyes, sir. 
This explains why the fleet hasn't attacked. They've been waiting for land support. They'll probably throw a force across the Charleston Peninsula and lay siege. I suggest we evacuate immediately, sir, before we're trapped. Now, let's not be hasty, Colonel. I must have time to think this out. Call an officer's assembly, Major O.E., please. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but there aren't three officers left in the fort outside the sickbay. Well, where are they? McKellar's. He's given a big party, and they all went. And they're celebrating their own deaths. Who gave them leave? I did. Things were quiet. I thought it would be good for the morale. McKellar is probably thinking about morale, too, sir, in another way. With your permission, sir, this is one party I'd like to break up. By all means, go quickly. I'll dress and join you at once, Major Ollie. Yes, sir. Crane, do you think McKellar planned this way? You have to admit, Monday night is a strange time to be giving a party. Nobody goes in or out, mister. I hear them say Mr. McKellar threw the key away until the party's over. I told you so. Peace, McKellar. The city of Charleston is in danger. There's a large enemy force marching to attack. Oh, go on, Colonel. You're just afraid we're going to have some fun, that's all. Ah, <laughs> that's it. Don't listen to him. Drink up, men. You're all so drunk already, you don't know what McKellar's doing to you. He wants you to stay here. Can't you understand that? Are you accusing me of plotting this party, Colonel Marion? I'm only saying what's obvious, McKellar. Now open that door. I'm leaving. You're not leaving here. Did you give me satisfaction, Colonel? Some other time when you're not so drunk, McKellar. What's your hurry, Colonel? <laughs> Give me a hand. Yeah. Oh. oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Give me a hand. You can't stay, my dear. You must go with the governor and Mrs. Rutledge. It doesn't seem right for me to leave. I feel that my duty is here in Charleston. I can't promise to hold the city, Governor, and I see no point in risking your capture. You recall the men, Colonel? I'm sorry, sir. McKellar had too much of a start. They're all out of action for the present, at least. That's most unfortunate. I've decided to defend the city, Colonel Marion. I wish you'd reconsider, sir. It'll be morning until those men at McKellar's will be sober enough even to get back to the barracks. Your leg, Colonel. You're injured. It's a sprain, I think. It won't interfere, sir. You're not staying, Colonel. I have a special mission for you and Major Ori. I want you to see that Governor Rutledge, Mrs. Rutledge, and my wife get safely through the enemy lines before the peninsula is closed off. General Lincoln, uh, with all due respects to the governor, can you afford to spare Major Ori and myself?